for those weather incidents that confuses quite a few people. What is sometimes quite a warm and fairly sunny day, yet a cloud which pops up, delivers some small, and sometimes not quite so small, balls of ice. So how is this possible? Well, the first thing we have to look at is the temperature. Now what might be a relatively warm day on the ground, as you gain altitude, the temperature begins to drop off quite rapidly. This is known by meteorologists as the lapse rate. And though it varies, it can be approximated to be about 10 degrees centigrade for every mile of altitude. So if it's 20 degrees at the ground level, two miles up, it's freezing. This normally doesn't matter much by the time any precipitation travels that far through the air or warmed up enough to melt. The standard exception is when the ground is near to freezing but still in positive territory. In this case, you may get snow falling which will just melt on contact with the ground. The next thing to consider is what's actually happening in the cloud itself. Now for hail to form, you need a cloud that's actually fairly tall and holds actually quite a lot of water vapour. It's normally referred to as a thunder cloud or a storm cloud, or actually technically a cumulonimbus. There actually doesn't actually need to be any thunder during a hailstorm. Looked at it from the side, these clouds generally have an anvil shape to them, with a wider base and the top and the column actually connecting the two. It's the action that's taking place within this column that results in the hail forming. The whole cloud may be anything up to 10 miles in height. So within the cloud, there will be considerable temperature range, with it well below freezing at the top and above freezing at the base. Now water condenses at the top of the column. Because the water is condensing at such a high altitude, it freezes frozen water then becomes too heavy and falls through the cloud, picking up more water as it falls. However, instead of emerging from the base of the cloud, warm air rising up from below the cloud pushes the hail back up through the cloud to the top of the column, where any liquid on the wall outside freezes again, makes the hail larger, till again it becomes too heavy and falls again. And these rising currents of warm air are essential to the creation of the hail, created by uneven heating of the ground, like areas of dark earth, vegetation or roads, alternatively cities or large urban areas will also create thermals. Now, each time this falling and being pushed back up the column occurs, the hail gets larger and larger and larger, until finally even the updraft can't hold the mass of the hail, and it falls through the air to the ground. Now because the hail is virtually a solid lump of ice, falls very rapidly through the air. And though some of the water on the external surface of the hail might melt on the way down, there's just far too much mass of the ice for it to melt completely before it hits the ground. Now this repeated layering of hailstones is shown when a large hailstone is actually sliced in half. You can see a ring formation similar to that of tree trunk rings, forming concentric rings, showing the number of times that the hail has been passed through the column in the cloud. So next time you think, why is there hail on a warm day? You actually do need those warm thermal currents for hail to form in the first place.